Okay, so once again, we're in the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, starting at verse 9, and it reads, Behold, the day of the Most High Power cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, meaning destroyed, right? And he shall destroy the sinners there out of it okay so he's going to destroy the sinners man the lovers of lies okay the ones who's giving you the false philosophy and doctrine and ideology that the moon receive her light from the sun right verse 10 for the stars of the heaven and the constellations thereof okay so that's also letting you know that the stars are the constellations right shall not give their light okay so that means that they have their own light right in continuation the sun shall be darkened in his going forth okay and the moon shall not cause her light to shine okay so right there it's reiterating that the sun the moon and the stars have their own glory man they have their own light right as it says here again in continuation of verse 10 from the middle, the sun shall be darkened and his going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Verse 11, and I will punish the world for their what evil and the wicked for their iniquity. OK, what is iniquity? Sin. What is sin? The transgression of the most High's laws, statutes and commandments. Right. Microphone check one, two. Hopefully that y'all can hear me. In continuation, verse 11 again, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness, okay, which is the proudness of the terrible, okay, so if you're walking around here with a proud spirit, a haughty spirit, an antisocial spirit, you know, you don't want to socialize with people, want to be to yourself, you know, because you may think that you're, you think that you're better than other people, right then the most high is going to destroy you man you're not a humble servant of the most high you don't believe these scriptures man you don't follow christ's example okay so you're going to be destroyed along with the wicked of the earth right according to the book of job chapter 9 24 right verse 11 again from the middle and i will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible so all of you proud haughty narcissist man you sociopaths right the most high is going to destroy you man right you lovers of lies so to speak right let's go to the book of jeremiah chapter four And once again, this is your brother Yahweh Yasserah from the Sea Souls of Israel, the Rocks of Offense, and also the Ambassadors for Righteousness, dropping you another video. So once again, we're in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4. And I'm going to start at verse 19. And it reads, My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart, which is the mind, right? My heart maketh a noise in me, I cannot hold my peace, because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet and the alarm of war. Okay, verse 20. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment meaning his house was spoiled, robbed, and destroyed, and his privacy, okay, his, 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 um, his humbleness is going to be destroyed in a moment, right? His curtains, the curtains is what covers your shame. It covers your privacy, right? Verse 21, how long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet, okay, which is the judgment going forth, right? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. Okay, so the people 
which is our people, particularly, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negroid descent, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, according to the promises, the covenant, and the, pro and the, and the, uh, the oath, man, and the curses, right? According to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, right? For my people is foolish. They have not known me, okay? So you didn't know that the Most High created the sun, moon, and the stars, man, which is the constellations. You didn't know that the Most High gave them all their own glory, their own light, man, to rule over certain parts of the day, right? You don't care to know. You don't even consider, right? You're ready to listen to and love the false lies and the ideologies of the world, man. That's telling you that the moon received her light from the sun, man, right? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are a sadist children, okay, which is also foolish and um, you can say stupid, right? And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge, okay? Verse 23, I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void in the heavens and they had what? No light. Okay. They didn't have no light. Meaning when the most high created the heavens and the earth, you know, he didn't send Hamashiach at that time. You know, he sent Hamashiach and Hashatan after he created the earth and the heavens. Right. And then after that, he used Hamashiach to create everything in the earth, including the sun, moon, and the stars, according to the book of Genesis and uh, the book of John, the first chapter, right? Verse 23 from the top, I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void in the heavens and they had no light. All right. Let's go to. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13. Okay, so in the book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 13 which is also in the book of apocrypha which is the hidden books of the bible and we're going to start at verse one and it reads surely vain are all men by nature which is vanity which is sin right you know vanity is a sin you know that you take pride and haughtiness in the outer appearance of things man all right the outer shell but as it says in the scriptures, you know, but inside you're as dead man's bones, right? You know, you don't have no validity. You don't have no substance, right? You know, you only rely on the outer appearance, man. Okay. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of God. Okay. That doesn't mean that you're stupid. You know, it just means that you're unwise. You don't have the wisdom of the most high because... You don't want to do your due diligence, man. You don't want to get in these scriptures, especially our people, to know the blatant truth, man. You know, you would rather listen to a whole bunch of people, especially your oppressors and your captors, man. You would rather listen to them to tell you a whole bunch of lies and tell you that the blood moon comes from the earth receiving the radiation and the heat upon the moon from the sunlight hitting it from the opposite, the opposite side, man. Right? That's the reason why the moon turns red, okay? But this is why the Most High says this, man, through the, the uh, wisdom of Solomon, right? Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the Most High power, right? So when you finally get into these scriptures, man, you know, and you find out the knowledge of these scriptures, and then you pray to the Most High to give you the wisdom through the Holy Spirit, then you're no longer going to be ignorant, man, right? And could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master who's the work master that's Hamashiach right 
but deemed I the fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the what? The stars, man. The circle of the stars. Or the violent water or the lights, okay? Plural. The lights of heaven, which is the firmament, to be gods which govern the world. So that's what our people do, man. A lot of our people are moon worshipers. They're sun worshipers. They're sun gazers, moon gazers, star gazers, right? The constellations, they love to follow the tarot, right? Now, that's not to say that the creation of the constellations is evil, but when you're following tarot, which is the zodiac signs of which tell you how to live your life, then you're idolizing, man. All right, you're supposed to be doing what the Most High tells you to do, which is keep the law, statutes, the commandments, man, right? And live your life the way you supposed to live it according to the righteousness of the Most High, right? And if you want to use the worship of sun and the moon uh, metaphorically and symbolically, there's a lot of false sun gods in the world, man, or was in the world, in the ancient world that's being worshipped today. Also moon gods, right? In Egyptology. You have the moon goddess Isis, okay? And then you have the sun goddess Horus and Osiris, okay? And Amun-Ra, which is the rebirth of the sun god, right? And which all derived from ancient Babylon, right? Which is the original pagans of the world, okay? You have the moon goddess Semiramis. And then you had the sun god, which is Nimrod. And then you had the rebirth of the sun god, which is um, Tammuz, okay? Same thing in religious churchanity. You know, you have their witch moon goddess, which is Virgin Mary. Okay. Uh, uh, Bloody Mary, so to speak. Right. Or Hail Mary. Okay. That's their queen. That's their moon goddess queen, man. Okay. And then you have Caesarea Borgia. Okay. Which is the rebirth of the sun god. Okay. That's the reason why they have those sun rays around Caesarea Borgia all the time. That's a worship of the sun, man. All right. And then you have his dad, which is Zeus. Okay, that's the, that's where you get Jesus from, Jesus, so to speak, right? Which is the ending of his name, which is S U S. Okay, so that's that's how you have it, man. In religious churchianity and Roman Catholicism, okay, they're your Trinity, so to speak, right? Zeus, Hail Mary, which is Virgin Mary, and then you have uh, 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 Jesus, which is Jesus, man. OK, and then also you have that with the heathens. OK, you have Krishna, Madhava, Shiva. OK, and then, of course, you have in Jainism, you have all of these different uh, uh, false idol gods that they worship. And then, of course, you have your African spirituality. They don't even worship those gods. They worship the spirits, man, demons. OK, in which they think are the ancestors, man, which is witchcraft, necromancy. OK. So that's why it says this here, man, in verse two, but deem either fire or wind or swift air or the circle of the stars. So that's actually letting you know that stars are circles, man. Stars don't have points. OK, so you also got to think about that, too, man. Like what have you been taught all your life, man? OK, all the way from your, your childhood to your adolescence, to your teenage, to your adult years, man, all throughout school, you've been taught that stars have points, man, and they don't. That's non-biblical, man. As it says here, man, in the Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, verse 2. And the circle of the stars, right? So also, for all of the, the so-called um, Israelites who like to say that, you know, the name of David, and which I did a video on, you can check that out when you get time, right? The name of David, right, which is Dilet, you know, that's the name of the... Um, the letter that's in the ancient Hebraic text, right, which is two D's, by the way, right? If you look up the word David in English or, or, or Latin, it have two D's, one at the front, one at the end. OK, so that's all that is. You know, if you look up the way the letter dialect is shaped in the ancient Hebraic text, it's a triangle. OK, so what they did was just take David's name, you know, and they inverted an upright triangle into a downright triangle or downside, you should say, right? So that's all that is. So that's how you get that shape of David's name. That's his imprint. Okay. 
And then you have the seal of Solomon, which is David's name because King Solomon is King David's son. You know, he wanted to keep King David's name alive. So he took King David's name and used it as his own and called it the seal of Solomon. OK, so that's all that is. You know, a lot of people like to say, oh, oh, you wearing and supporting that six pointed evil star, op, that evil star. Right. But if you had due diligence of study and knowledge and wisdom, OK, and discernment, then according to the scriptures, you would know that stars don't have points. So how can that be the wicked star of David? Right. As it says here. But deemed I the fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven, which is the constellations, the stars or the sun, moon and the stars to be the gods. OK, lowercase g and a s, which is plural, right, which govern the world. Verse three, whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods. Let them know how much more or better the Lord of them is, okay, which is the ruler over them is, the creator, all right, which is Hamashiach, okay, and also the Most High. For the first authority of beauty have created them, the first authority of beauty, all right. But if they were astonished at their power and virtue, let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them, okay, which is Hamashiach in the Most High, right? Verse 5. For by the greatness and the beauty of the creatures, right? Now, the word creature, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's talking about some critter or some animal. A creature is derived from the creation, okay? So anything that's created is considered a creature, all right? It's not only subjugated to something that's like, you know, a critter or some creepy crawler or something like that, right? For by the greatness and beauty of the creatures, proportionably, the maker of them is seen, okay? So you see the greatness and the beauty and the glory of the creation of the heavens, man, right? Of the Most High in Hamashiach. Verse 6. But yet for this... They are the less to be blamed for they pre adventure err. So for the ones who's pre adventuring, you're erring off. You're going off, man. You're going off into all of these false ideologies and doctrines and dogmas, man. Right. You're going off into Islam. You're going off into Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism. OK, worshiping all of these multiple gods, man. Right. Religious church, Hannity, Roman Catholicism. OK, secret societies. OK, right. Fraternities and sororities, all of these people, the heathens, right. You're following the heathens, loving lies, right. All of these people are idolaters, man. OK, they're lovers of lies, man. Right. In continuation. For they pre-adventure er seeking the most high. And desirous to find them. So you're looking for the most high, actually, in all of these false ideologies and dogmas and gods, man, right? Verse 7. For being conversant in his works, they search him diligently and believe their sight. They believe their own sight, man, right? Because the things are beautiful that are seen, right? So you believe your own sight because you believe the moon is a god because you can see the moon every night. You believe the sun is a god because you can see the sun every day and the stars every night, right? You believe the water, the power of the water in the waves, right? You believe the waves is a god, right? Because you can hear the waves every night. You can feel the water. You think the wind is a god, right? Because you can feel the wind blowing on you every day, right? You think the trees are gods. You think the rocks are gods. Wood is god. Stone is god, right? Just like religious churchanity and uh, Islam, right? They think the wood and the stone, which is the, 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 the Kaaba stone in Mecca, they think they're gods, man. Right. But as it says here. For being conversant in his works, they search him diligently and believe their sight because the things are beautiful that are seen. Verse eight. How be it? Neither 
are they to be pardoned, right? You're not going to be pardoned, man, right? Verse 9, for if they were able to know so much that they could aim at the world, how did they not sooner find out the Lord of the Most High, right, thereof? So if you can find out all of these things, right, about the so-called moon and the stars and the constellations and how the sun gives the moon its light, right? And the reason why it turns red is from the shadow of the earth and the heat and the radiation and the light from the sun. If you can find out all of these things from Scientology and science and all of these other nations and idolaters, right? Then how do you not know about the Most High, man? How do you not know about these scriptures, man? Right? How be it, neither are they to be pardoned. So you're not going to be pardoned, man, right? Because you put all of your time in loving lies and following behind vain, false philosophies and ideologies. You're not going to be pardoned, man, because the only thing that you had to do is pick up the scriptures to know the truth, man, right? But you ignore that. For if they were able to know so much that they could aim at the world, how did they not sooner find out the Lord thereof? Verse 10. But miserable, okay, miserable are they. And in dead things is their hope. Dead things is their hope, okay? Who called them gods, all right? So that's what you call. You call that wooden cross a god, right? You call that Kaaba stone in Mecca a god, right? You call the Kabbalah a book of the gods, right? Uh, Madhava, Shivna, Krishna, right? You call your African ancestors and African spirituality gods, right? You call Lucifer himself God. Some of you worship your oppressor, man. You believe everything your oppressor tells you, okay? But when you actually have the light right in front of you, which is someone keeping the law, statute, commandment to the most high, right? Which is of your nation of people. When they trying to give you the light, you just totally ignore them. And go straight to your oppressor, man, right? So a lot of you worship your oppressors as gods, man, right? But it says here, but miserable are they. And in dead things is their hope, okay? Which is the congregation of the dead, according to the book of Psalm, right? Which the congregation of the dead? Those are the idolaters, man. Those are the heathens. Those are the other nations, man, who are lovers of lies, man, right? And in dead things is their hope who called them gods, which are the works of men's hands, gold and silver, okay, to shoe art in, and the resemblances of beasts, okay, that's what they look like, man, they look like beasts, right, you got some idols that look like bulls, you got some idols that look like cougars, right, you got some idols that look like men, all right, your Buddha statues, right, your Krishna statues, your Shiva and Madhava statues, right? Your African spirituality statues, okay? You know, your Roman Catholicism statues, which is uh, Hail Mary, by the way, okay? The Roman Catholics worship that statue, okay? But what are they? Which are the works of man's hands, gold and silver, to shoe art in them and resemble a beast of stone good for nothing okay so that's what that Kaaba stone is in Mecca man in Islam good for nothing man for all of you want to be Muslim Ishmaelites out there right the work of an ancient hand okay so that goes to show that all of this was going on in the ancient world man okay and it's being worshipped today all right that wooden cross which is really a um a torture ancient roman tool right for the for those who they wanted to torture and kill mainly us right when they was conquering jerusalem okay for the ones who didn't want to bow down to them you know what i'm saying that's the the tool that they use okay just like they did with hamashiach you know when hamashiach he came into this world you know he came to do the works of his father he didn't come to bow down to the ancient greco-romans right so that's what they did they crucified him on their torture device which is a cross a so-called cross right but our people our foolish people within our nation the people today which is the so-called negroes 
Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent. This is what they say have power, man, right? They look at that wooden cross or that crucifix or that so-called Jesus piece and wear it around their neck as is a god, man, right? That's why it says this here, to shoe art in, okay? Gold and silver and resemblances of beast, all right? Just like in uh, Egyptology, they have that half dog or half Doberman picture and half man, okay? That resembles a beast, man, all right? You have so-called America today. They have the eagle, the bald eagle as their idol, man. That's a beast, right? A fowl of the air, right? Or a stone good for nothing, okay? You have these uh, 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 crystal rocks, right? That our people love to worship and cherish in, in witchcraft, dipping and dabbing into witchcraft and Jainism, right? Those rocks are good for nothing, man. But our people place their whole hope and their faith in these rocks like it's going to protect them, right? But what Solomon said through the spirit of the Most High are a stone good for nothing. The work of an ancient hand, man. All right. So that's what that is. The works of ancient hands, man. OK. Let's go to the book of Sirach. Chapter 43. Okay, we're in the book of Sirach, chapter 43, and I'm starting at verse 1, and it reads, The pride of the height, the clear firmament, the beauty of heaven, okay, which is glorious view, all right? The beauty of heaven, okay, which is the firmament with his glorious shoe, Slakia. Verse 2, the sun, when it appeareth, declaring at his rising a marvelous instrument, the work of the who, the most high man. That's what the sun is, right? Verse 3, at noon, it parcheth the country, meaning that, you know, it heats up the country, right? From its heat. And who can abide the burning heat thereof? Verse 4. A man blowing a furnace is in works of heat, but the sun burneth the mountains three times more, breathing out fiery vapors and sending forth bright beams, which is the sun rays, right? Or the ultra violet rays, right? It dimmeth the eyes, meaning you can't stare in the sun completely, man. You're going to go blind. You're going to, you know, your, your vision is going to get dim, right? Verse 5. Great is the Lord that made it, and at his commandment it runneth hastily, okay? His commandment, just like I said before, man. You know, every creation of the Most High has a commandment to follow forever and ever, right? Until he sent Hamashiach back. Verse 6, he made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world, okay? From the moon is the sign of feast, a light, okay? A light, all right? That's what the moon is, man. It don't say anything about the sun giving the light to the moon, man, right? Or the illumination. Verse 7, again from the top. From the moon is the sign of feast, okay, which is the high holy days, right? A light that decreaseth in her perfection, okay? So when something decreases in the perfection, that means it's going to new, all right? It didn't say it increased in her perfection, right? So if the moon was increasing in the perfection, as is seen here in the picture, then it's going to be full, okay? That's when it's increasing, but when it's decreasing, when it's turning into a waxing phase, it's going back to the new moon, okay? Which is new. Every, anything new is perfected, okay? So that's how you know the new moon is the dark moon, okay? Because it decreases in its perfection. So 
if you're keeping the full bright moon as the new moon, you're going off, man. Right. Because it, it says it plainly here. Right. And if you have the understanding of words. Right. Verse six again from the top. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. OK. From the moon is the sign of feast, a light that decreaseth. OK. In her perfection. Verse eight. The month is called after her name. OK, so the month is called after the new moon. OK, which is the 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 Chadash. All right. The Rosh Chadash. OK, which is new moon, new month. Right. In continuation. Increasing wonderfully in her changing. OK, so that's when it's going back into the full bright moon. When it's increasing wonderfully in her changing. So when it says that wonderfully, that's mean that you, you're, you're going to look up at the moon and you're going to gaze at it. You're going to be amazed at it, astonished at its brightness in the night sky. Right. So that's how you know it's going into the full moon. You can't gaze at the dark moon, which is the new moon, because you don't see it. It's fully emerged in the firmament. But when it's increasing in her light to come about to the full moon, that's how it becomes wonderful. As it says here, right? The moon is called after her name, right? Increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above, shining, okay, in the firmament of heaven. In the firmament, okay? Not outer space somewhere or out of the earth somewhere in the solar system, man. This is in the firmament, man, right? Verse 9. The beauty of heaven, the glory of the stars, an ornament given light in the highest places of the Lord. OK, so the, the, the stars is actually higher than the sun and the moon, man. right? They're, they're right on the firmament, right? Verse 10, at the commandment of the Holy One, they will stand in their order. And never faint in their watches, meaning every single year, every single month, those stars is going to be in the same positions forever and ever. However, they rotate around the earth along with the moon. Right. So they all following the commandment of the most high man and they all have their own light and their own illumination. man. Right. So give another reiteration to this right here. We're going to go into the book of Enoch.